Hey, welcome to Talking Hawthorne. All things Hawthorne for the great diaspora across the world of the Hawthorne faithful. Welcome, boys. Jake, Reese, and Maddie. How are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, fantastic. Excellent. So uh, we um, we thought we'd follow true Hawthorne form and go back to the uh, the draft, and we picked up a couple of youngsters, and we're blooding them tonight, aren't we, Matt? Oh yeah, we've been on uh, uh, scouting for quite a while. We've had uh, we've had uh, Bacchanara gives a few tip offs. We, we we sort of you know we're we're around the grounds. <laughs> we're, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're around. Around the grounds, and these these two uh, blokes were um, we found were very passionate Hawthorne supporters, uh, and they can talk, which is handy. So hey, nothing better than that. Welcome, boys. It's good to have you with us. Uh, it's very good to be here. Uh, we're very Thanks excited. Very uh, obviously, being Hawks fans for so long, it's awesome to be able to talk as a fan to the fans. So can't wait. Absolutely, right. couldn't agree more. Right. Ready to get stuck in. Excellent. Now, um, if you're joining us tonight, a similarity Sorry? to us, Brad. They've uh, the, the lads have been talking about the Hawks for years um, as mates, and uh, you know, they they definitely held their own with some of the the chats we've had already. So yeah, keen to um, yeah let the the young fellas um, share a bit of their their wisdom and, and insights into the Hawks. So get oh, a fan. And- um, Boys, it's there's nothing like having uh, the TikTok generation on here as well, you know. So it's we're we're getting a bit long in the tooth, Maddie. So uh, we thought we'd we'd get these young blokes in to uh, give us a bit of a lift, maybe raise our profile. So we might even get a few ladies watching too as a result. So. <laughs> I'll tell you right. what, there's, some, there's something coming later with TikTok too. I've got someone in my sights. So for the fans out there, stay tuned for that. Definitely looking forward to that. Now, if you're joining us tonight, uh, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we love to to see that. Also, we're an interactive uh, uh, stream, so feel free to chat with us or ask us some questions. Uh, boys, I think there's a lot to talk about after that game uh, last weekend. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Um, in the end, it didn't look like the worst loss when it comes to the scoreline, but the way we played in the first half, it was just very frustrating to watch when we've got so much speed off the half back line. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit weird if um, if you weren't as keen observers as we are, and you looked at like the the box score and see a fifteen point loss at off the stadium, you're probably thinking, "Geez, we were close, but not quite there." But geez, that start got to fix these first quarters up, boys. But um, yeah, very things to be encouraged by, things that we need to work on, and looking forward to getting stuck into both. What, yeah, what look it up. would make, don't you reckon, if, if Hawks just shift that quarter, if I went the wrong way, if we start our first three quarters like that, I, I reckon Freya would have rolled over. Oh, I reckon that's a win. Oh, great. Look, I, I don't know, Matt. I, I think um, that was the most – like we, we've lost – the previous two games against the grand finalists um, and we held our own and it's sort of like, no, I can see what we need to do to improve to get there. But that game against Fremantle, um, it was like a, um, you know, it was like the local meat market. There was like a, the, the, the amount of butchering they were doing uh, with the ball was just, it was hideous. Uh, uh, and look, I saw what they were doing, but the, it's, it, it's either they're a young team and they're just making mistakes, uh, but you can't say that about like Kyle Hardigan, right? It's he was just uh, that's the worst game I've seen him play. That was that was just terrible. I, I'm sorry, I hate to say it. I love you, Kyle, and thanks for joining us. But that's that's got to be the worst game I've seen him play out of all three or four. So, well, on, um, on the butchering, I, I think it was a stray kick that took Jaeger's tooth out, wasn't it? You didn't see that one. Oh, I right. like that. Not Moving sure on. it's a straight kick or not. No, no, no. Yeah, I was just joking. It's bad dad jokes. They can't afford to get a tooth out. It's Jaeger. Yeah. It's meant those model looks keeping around. Goodness me. Oh, oh, mate, a lot of women wept that day, um, that day when that happened. So, uh, it's yeah, he's got to be the most handsome bloke in football, Jager. Uh So, it's uh, then, him missing a tooth. Maybe maybe uh, gives us other blokes a chance, right? So, That's so it. what we'll did you think? We can get. What, what, what's the uh, what's the catalyst? Why are we having to wait to quarter time and then go? What what's happening, fans? We need the insights. What are you thinking? 
but kick us off, Reese. Uh, what watching at the start? I think I I hope that uh, our midfielders are having nightmares of David Mundy grabbing the ball and and going forward. He had three clearances in the first quarter, and I think for the first twenty one minutes we had one, and he had three himself. So. Um, I think we've got to make our mind up, either attack the man or attack the ball, because I feel like we're trying to do both at once and we're doing neither. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it was, you know, going over to Perth and, you know, they have a they have a big crowd over there now and, like, they got their tail up after a few early clearances and a few early goals. But, yeah, it was definitely frustrating to watch, especially at full time knowing how badly we played in the first quarter only to lose by 15 points. So that's the frustrating part for me. Uh, so, you bang on, fellas. It's the that um, that first quarter we've just been – every first quarter we're just not turning up and something's got to change mentally It's uh, with our first quarters. I mean, I, I love how Clarko spins the magnets and moves the board around and uh, gets us back in the game. I love that about him. And that's, that's just some supreme coaching there. But yeah, it just well, wasn't enough. They were too far ahead. You know, six yeah, goals. The only, the only first quarter we've won for the year was against the Bombers, and then they kicked eight on us in the second quarter. So Yeah. Um, yeah. Are we too change. defensive at the start then? Is is that part of the, the mix? I know you know you, you give Warple the assignment. I love that, that they're trying to just play him back into form. They did a little bit with uh, Finn McGuinness too in Box Hill. Um, similar move. Take that fella out get a little bit of your own ball and get the confidence back is is that are we starting off too defensive i think um i think like i said earlier our ball movement started off way too defensive um chipping it back and forth and not getting any speed on the ball which is what you know the week before against geelong you know people dashing off the half back line like cj and jarman impey was what got us back into that game oh, that was gold love oh, it was brilliant it was brilliant. He could, but... he could lead the AFL in metres gained next year, CJ, or in a couple of years. Just Oof. grab it and go. Yeah. And, and that is one of the bright spots about that game, right, is CJ. Oh, my God. I can't, <laughs> can you love a player any more than that, Cyril? Yes, you can. But, geez, <laughs> how exciting is the man? So yeah, I think I'll, he... I'll pull my hand up. I was a doubter at the end of last year, and I've never been happier being wrong. Jesus All right, this is your last show, mate. Uh, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> I can pick my hand up. I was wrong. That's okay. All right. Well, it's, uh, good. I'm glad you admitted that. I, so, I think uh, that's why, to back that up, though, we, we had, um, I think it was only two two bounces um, against Dockers. You know, so that's CJ got something like five uh, the week prior, well, one of the yeah. two weeks prior, just by himself. So it's, yeah, we, we did lose that, and I think that quick switch without the run um, might not be the recipe quite that we were after or Freo was onto us. So, yeah. Yeah. What do you make of Big Boy and the Rucks? Because right now I, I'm feeling like we need a little bit more um, from the clearance work. We had two Ruckmen aged over the age, uh, sorry, over the age of 30 play on the weekend against two Ruckmen that had 33 games experience between them, and we... Um, the hitouts were pretty much even. I think we won by a handful, um, and they won the clearances by seven. Um, Oof, correct. Yeah. And then we, the no adjectives will come from me. That's that's pretty stark in itself, and with a pretty daunting opponent next week, um, needing a lift for sure. Center clearances was eighteen Freo uh, to ten for the Hawks for the game. So I mean those those quick balls. I'm like, I don't know what, what what's happened with Big Boy there. He should have really dominated. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. Sean Darcy played like Corey McKernan, which didn't help at some stage, <laughs> knocking into any blokes, whether it was his own or ours. So, uh, we hope it's a uh, a once off and he responds. Yeah. He'll respond, big boy. He'll respond. We've got faith in the skipper. Look, either way, I, I think he had a solid game, right? It's where the, the parts where we were really falling down was in, in the back, and again, we couldn't take a contested mark up front. So now McAvoy went for mark of the year, and Jesus, that was a good leap. Never seen a Ruckman leap like that, but it was, it's still, it's just, um, we're lacking some polish. I think that's all you can say. Right now, we're lacking some polish. If we, if we had the skill that we needed in order to execute Clarko's game plan, would have been on top and would have maintained supremacy um, in the last quarter, but we just couldn't do it. 
So I've got no doubt these blokes can run out a game and they're as fit as the next team. And they've shown that in the previous three games. Uh, but it's the skill. Skill's our biggest downfall at the moment. And, you know, you've got some blokes like Tim O'Brien and um, and Hardigan and, um, you know, these older blokes where it's like we're relying on these guys, but they're in their... They're over, all over 27. I don't know if that's really a thing that you can fix at this stage of their career. The young blokes, no worries. You know, CJ had a, had a few clangers. Um, but it's, it, you know, they can work on that and they're only going to get better. But these older blokes, I just can't see them improving. I'm taking the ruck work as a blip and and big James Cousins here is uh, right. Ned Reeves and, uh, and Cousins, they're, they're doing very well at Box Hill level. So... I don't know if Reezy will get a chance to come back in. Brooksby's just uh, had his first game back. So welcome, uh, big fella. Apparently he's had a good influence on on uh, Reeves as well. So if you saw the video during the week, Reeves countered the um, uh, the hub life as an opportunity to really bulk up and, and um, put a bit of strength on. So he thinks that's part of what's uh, giving him a bit of a lift at Box Hill. So it's good, a bit of pressure from underneath, but I, I would say it's just a bit of a blip for, uh, for big boy this week. Yeah, pre- pressure for spots is always good. Got a cracking question here. Uh, Fender... Mayton, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hartley should swing forward with his kick. Yes or no? And then we'll get stuck into it. What do we think? Give us a heart if you like that, fans, um, or chuck it in the comments. Good question, Fender. Um, I, I don't have an opinion. What do you What do you think, Jake? I, I don't see why not, to be honest. Um, he's experienced, not so much at AFL level, but he has football experience with his age. Uh, he's got a good pair of hands, and as you saw on the weekend, he's a beautiful kick of the footy. Um, so if we're playing the three tools of O'Brien, Lewis, and Kaczynski, for example, and they can't quite get their hands on the footy and we're not kicking a winning score, why not throw Hartley forward and O'Brien back? It's worked in the past. So I, I think it's a I think it's a really good point, Fender. Yeah, I, good. I like it. Splinters, splinters. Had more, had more meters gained than anyone else on the ground last week, Michael Hartley. Nearly 200 more than any other player. So he's got a good leg on him for sure. Yeah, uh, Reese. I think uh, Matt's saying that you're sitting on the fence there, mate. You got mate. too many splinters in your backside. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with no. Leave him back. I think he'll be all right. <laughs> it was, it was, it was good. I thought. Um, Matt Ta- Matt Tabernard, I think a lot of people forget, was in the All Australian squad last year. True, um, and their uh, back line was good. Frio's back line, yeah, very um, good. Yeah. And um, yeah, and Matt Tabernard gave them gave him and Hardigan uh, a few problems, and good luck to him. But uh, Hartley down back for me. Mm, yep, I don't mind Hartley down back. I think uh, Justin's here chiming in to say he couldn't do any worse. Um, but yeah, I, I think Hartley's. Really pressed to, to really get a spot. Um, he's going to have to work super hard to keep it. But I don't mind him doing a little bit of pinch hitting. Um, Dom thinks he might miss out too. So let, let's see. The matchups is interesting. We've almost got too much tall um, for some weeks, I reckon. Yeah. I thought we were going to be way too tall on the weekend. Um, luckily, the cyclone off the West Coast didn't really affect the conditions. But um, I still thought we were a tad too tall. Okay. Jeez, Matt, we've got a meteorologist uh, on the team now, so that's a whole other uh, skill set that we weren't anticipating. We're, we're um, diversifying. This is great. Thanks, Jake. That's awesome. And, uh, with, no, and with no Ben Brown or Sam Wiedemann for Melbourne next week, um, yeah, height might be a factor. Yeah, so if we're coming in with um, a bit of a mix-up, this is the real Jake Smith, apparently. Um, so uh, <laughs> he, he's watched a bit of Box Hill. Um, that's an interesting one. Uh Morris, Josh Morris, the tank. Yeah, oh, Brocky. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Brocky. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sticking with him. How much, yeah. how much rope did we give Brockman? Uh, I think he, he'll be able to impact games if he keeps. He's not quite sticking tackles for mine. Yeah. Um, we're used to seeing some, some very good pressure forwards that just have got clamps when they put a hand on someone. They usually, you know, bringing them down. Um, but I'm, I'm willing to keep backing him, but. Jake Smith thinks he's a bit of pressure for Brocky's spot. Well, oh, I don't think so. Smithy, I think. He's he's not going anywhere. No. He no. still played well. I mean, it wasn't as good as his previous three games, but who cares? One bad game. And I wouldn't even call it a bad game. No. One one not as good game out of, the, um, out of four, where the other three, he was, he was um, probably our leading goal kicker and still is for the season. Yeah. Every, he's kicked a goal every single game. 
Yeah. Should have kicked, kicked two. Jeez, he flushed that one from the boundary line. That yeah, was he lovely. Was, oh. yeah. Is it, is it a bit of fan, fanboying, though, from you, Brad? Because, like, I know you, you tend to like some people or, or not and give them a hard time. I just wanted to remind oh. you about Jager. Oh. Um, because we did. You've been giving it to him for a year, wanting a bit more, wanting a bit more. Everyone, elite is in blue. Let, let's just go over this for Brad's um, sake. We'll go slowly, Brad. Tell us if you need us to go any slower. All right. But All right. All right. Disposals. Yeah. Elite. Yeah. Yep. Look at this. Elites everywhere. One awesome. percenters. Yeah. Handballs, yeah. rebound 50, and effective kicks. Oh, beautiful oh. stats, man. It's, uh, these stats match his biceps. They're elite. <laughs> it's but, but let let me ask you this one stat, Matt. How many games has he won us this year? How many has he influenced? Well, won us. He, How many games has he won us? Uh you don't judge one. It's not. It's a team That's sport. Look at look, look, look at look at you man. backing away like Homer into a bush, man. It's, <laughs> I, I've nailed you. I've nailed it. Not a chance. So, not a chance. So all I'm saying, I'm, I'm just, I've just got a little bit more expectations on Jager. And um, I look, the guy is probably the highest paid bloke on the team. We, we forfeited two first round picks for the guy. You know, we, we didn't just, uh, just, you know, just say, hey, come over and play with us, Jager. You'd be great, great addition. He's not a journeyman, man. The guy's a superstar. And on top of that, Matt, he's on my membership card. <laughs> right, the guy's the face of the club. He's not. Yeah. He's not just some journeyman good bloke that we brought in like Hartley to to play a role. He's he, the guy's the 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 deal breaker or the deal maker in the middle. When you get Jack on the show, he's gonna bicep curl you, and uh, we'll have a, had enough of that conversation. So, I'll, mate, I'll put right on the spot, if I can, has the trade been a pass or a fail so far? Uh, jury's out, mate. No, no, that's too many splinters, if I can use your words. Yeah, no, it's it's true, but it, I, I think it's it's too soon. What's it? It's the third season. I I wouldn't. I'd say that Gold Coast Suns have got the better deal so far. That's what I'd say. Uh, these these bushes are looking good, you know, right beside me, Marge. Um, so anyway, <laughs> let's let's I'm not move on to Box Hill. Um, Quick recap from some of the players. Uh, so versus Carlton, we had uh, uh, Andy Andy Ottens gives a little bit of a uh, a rundown. The Hawthorne development coach. So Ned Reeves, dominant ruckman on the day. He did give up some inches, um, but combining well with his tap work. Uh, Connor Downey, really good form on the wing, running carry, and his big left foot coming into the game, uh, getting better each week. Connor Nash, he played a different role this week. Um, impressed with his contested ball. Pressure, tackling, and physicality. Lachlan Bramble, uh, fitness looks to be at another level to most, which is um, probably should get Hawks fans salivating. Mm. James Cousin, most pro prolific uh, ball winner. Uh, really good connection with Jay, uh, with Reeves in the ruck. And uh, the big Emerson Jekka, Chris would be uh, spewing. That's his boy. Um, so he's kicked six the week prior, but five this week, if you don't Oof. mind, crashing packs, taking marks, um, and... and Let's let's touch on that one in a second. But Finn McGuinness, um, tagging role this week. So uh, outstanding again was uh, the write-up. And each week he's been able to build his own possessions tally while doing the defensive job. So um, Jack Saunders, lastly, uh, very fit uh, and very fast. So good signs uh, coming out of Box Hill and putting a bit of pressure on the Boys, team. Let me ask you this. Is, is Jacker a, a tall forward or is he a medium? Or where would you say he fits? I'd say he'd be more medium-sized forward. I don't think... Like a Gunston. He, yeah, in the same vein as a Gunston. Obviously, he's got a very, very large amount of work to do to get up to a Gunston level. But um, if I don't see him walking down to the goal square and eyeing Harris Andrews and say, how are you going, mate? I'm going to take you apart today. Yeah. So, like, if he were to come in, who's he replacing? Because he's banging on the door. There's no doubt about it. My, well, how long is banging on the door? That's two weeks, 11 goals. Nice bags, but do, yeah. does he need to do that for longer? And and Lewis is out this week being suspended for, for one week. Oh, he gets suspended. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He hit Caleb Sarong in the last quarter. Um, yeah, fair enough. And um, Jared Harborough got gave Michael Gibbons a concussion test and didn't get cited, but we're not here to 
hang the proverbial on the MRO, we'll move on. Come on, mate. Don't knock the AFL, all right? They get no, it right all the time. They do, they do good work. They do. They do. Um, um, all right. So who, who's he replacing? Do you, do you think he's a um, – do you think he – because uh, Lewis is out, then he he could come in? If, if they get him in, do you think that he's a chance to – would he be replacing Lewis? Or are we too sure? In, I say yes. If he comes in this, if he comes in, it'll it'll be, it'll have to be this week. Dunstan's one to two away. Lewis only got a one week suspension. Um, if we can get one or two games into him, see where he's at, um, and Gunners comes back. But yeah, oh. eleven goals in two games, and our leading goal kick is Dylan Moore on seven. And if he's taking marks, um, no Stephen May either for Melbourne. So I think the stars are aligning for the man with the best team in footy. <laughs> I think you're right, mate. Very good. Um, I, I think we're seeing these smalls, and I think by about the six-week mark, we'll start to see all the coaches have their adjusted game plans and whatnot, and hopefully our little uh, mosquitoes keep kicking goals for us, but maybe these big start to come into it a little bit more as well. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a bit of love for, for Jekka, um coming through. I, I'm, I'm giving him a nod, but I want him to be given maybe three weeks, not just in yeah. and out. Yeah, Justin oh, Gillen just commented, uh, Jack is 197 centimetres. Surely not. Wow. Apparently he's got, like, not maybe but Stewie, Justin, but he's got, he's got jukes. He's got absolute jukes. Yeah. Listen, uh, Justin, a spot's just opened up for you on Talking Hawks. These blokes don't know what they're talking about. So um, <laughs> 100, 197 centimetres. The guy's a giant. Yeah, I'm sorry. If he's 197 That's, centimetres doing that at VFL level, yeah. yeah. We need to confirm that, though, boys. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, I, I let's confirm so. it. So, um, geez, that, right. that'd be brilliant. Oh, I'm getting excited. He's Tim O'Brien's out and Jack is in. Yeah, yeah. Timmy's Timmy's going to be uh, pushing it with, uh, if Jack has uh, got that sort of form, I reckon. So, look, I, I've... We need to know the game plan. What's what's the role for Tim? Have you got fresh eyes for us, Reese? Jake, second, what, ruck, second ruck if he can't get into the game. Does he do enough in the ruck, though? Possibly doesn't need to. Um, and I mean that in the sense of we don't want him to go in there and get 25 hit-outs. But if he's not getting his hands on the ball at centre-half forward, the last thing that we want to do is keep him out of the game for extended periods. Um, I mean, how much did he do against uh, Essendon before he kicked that goal? Um, and... You know, with no disrespect, you're getting your hands on the ball. All well and good. He doesn't get out marked, but if he's not clunking them, it's get him either get him around the footy as much as you can. And I think <laughs> second rucks away for him to do that. Get around the ground, get his hands on the ball, and um, but if that's not the way to go, yeah, it's hard to justify um, mm. him keeping his spot. Look, it might, and I think if the man can if the man can hold a mark. He'd be the most exciting player in football, in my opinion. But he just—it's like he'll jump ten times and he might mark it once, and that's that's just the most disappointing thing for me about uh, Tim O'Brien. I, I I love him and I was so hopeful for him, but if he could just hold a mark, that would be um, incredible. He's a deceptively beautiful set shot kick too. Yeah. I reckon it's a little bit between the ears. You put him down back and he marks well and he plays his role very well. So uh, I'm not sure Yeah. if he stays. Reeves for Segler. I don't mind this from Barry. That's, the only, uh, yeah. the that's only what... problem I have is with that is how how solid is Reeves as a forward? Because if we're playing Neves, uh, Reeves and Big Boy... Where does where does Big Boy fit into that? Is he the ruckman? Is he the forward that chops out in the ruck? Yeah, great question. I think um, there's chemistry for mine as well with Reeves coming in and how well he's going to click with the midfield. But um, he does he is clunking a few um, at Box Hill, so I don't know whether they're back or forward. Um, we don't get too many stats from the um, pro season. It's about to be the season proper, but um, yeah, I don't think they'll rush him in. Um, Seglers, you, you can't underestimate the experience there as well. But I'm excited having to be fellow like Ray's waiting in the wings. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Well, bit right, of change. I can I can confirm. Jacker is 197 centimeters. Yeah, get him in. He's, he's 19. Uh, 
Boys, yeah, I've just found in. my new favourite player. <laughs> yeah, he's in. He's, I can he's confirm in. that's the most amount of research Brad's done all year, and uh, <laughs> Chris has been on the Jekka train for a while. So um, I didn't awesome. even know who he was until tonight. Uh, we, we've got I'm another fellow. Anyway, I'll tell you another story another time, Brad, but uh, we, we've got a close connection with, with Jekka. But, um, hey, Kane Corns uh, made some comments. Did you catch that? Mm, yep. I, did. I wish I didn't catch it. Um, he, Which planet he does he live on? Well, he's hang, a on hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. For the, for those who haven't heard um, what yeah. is the comments, does someone want to repeat yeah. them? Yeah. Um, on uh, Footy Classified, he came out and said he had grey fears that Hawthorne were becoming the new North Melbourne uh, <laughs> in, the, in, in, the, in the sense of bottoming out. And in a way, I don't want to sound like I'm defending him here because I think the take... Uh, is not an accurate one to put it lightly. Um, they then footy classified put up a uh, a graphic of the recycled players we've brought in versus the recycled players they've got in. Um, they've had in, sorry, because uh, they included players that are not there anymore because they got delisted. So um, claiming that without Tom Mitchell's Brownlow and Chad Wingard having his apprenticeship at Port, the quality of the lists would be the same. And I'm not trying to disrespect anyone at North Melbourne here, but saying Tom Phillips, Diego O'Meara, Sam Frost um, are the same quality as a Jasper Pittard, a Dom Tyson and a Paul Ahern. Perhaps a little disrespectful from Kane there. And, um, Shots fired. I think he's thrown some, something at the wall and seen what stuck. But yep. yeah, no. Shots yeah. fired over the house. There we go. Yeah, and, we, we, yeah. We lovely like, return volley there, Reese. Well done, mate. Oh, yeah. I love it. And to compare us to the most irrelevant football club in the league ever, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so come on. Uh, very good, very good. So um, I, I came back um, fishing, Brad, um, from, from South Australia. I was sad to say... Um, just didn't get uh, any love from Poppy. So we we need to, if anyone's That's got That's all right, any... mate. I, I stumped up and I found us another guest instead. Oh, hello. You stumped up? Yep, I did. I, I stumped up uh, and I had some support from a good mate of mine, a, a Viking mate who was beside me, uh, like my wingman. Uh, yeah. And I walked up and I said to the man, I said, they tell me that you shouldn't meet your heroes, but I'm a risk taker. And uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Kennett, Said hello, and uh, he agreed to come on the show, didn't he, Matt? Dang, next week. Next we've week. confirmed. We've confirmed wow. next week he's going to be on the show. So stay tuned for that. And if you're yes. excited like I am, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to YouTube yet, jump on there and hit the subscribe Wait. button on YouTube because I'm excited. Oh, hit the button. Is- we need we need uh, some some good good questions for Jeff. So uh, whatever you've got, fans, um, fire them in through the week. Um, we're very pumped to have uh, the president, El Presidente, um, on our live stream. So join us next week as well. But uh, subscribe, will you? Just subscribe. Yeah, oh. uh, we're looking to move. We're looking to migrate more towards YouTube. It's not that we're going to cut off Facebook. We just we. Um, we would like most of um, our viewing to go through YouTube. We're sort of split between the two at the moment. Uh, and um, so it would help us a lot if you could jump over there and subscribe and uh, watch it through that um, for us as well. And if you've got any Hawthorne mates, ask them why they're not watching us yet and why they haven't subscribed. So, Tell them about uh, the talent we've got. Look at these boys coming through the ranks. Um, we've got one more thing coming on YouTube. So uh, looking at uh, launching this tomorrow. So... I mentioned that lace out. Uh, we I, I did before round one. Believe it or not, it's taken us a little while to get some work done on the video, but that'll be released tomorrow. Uh, look at the season. Um, the kind people at Sharon, who are behind uh, lace out podcast, who I did the uh, the whole live stream with, you get a thirty percent discount if you want to get a Sharon. We'll have that uh, the details in the YouTube description. So there's going to be some some cool stuff in YouTube. Get on board there, and um, yeah, let us know your thoughts from uh, the the season preview. Even though we're four weeks in now, let's go. Uh, is there yeah, we, 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 we've got a little. 
We've got a little bit of bragging going on here, Fender. Uh, Jeff lives down, lives down the road from me. Now, I don't know if it's the same Jeff Fender, all right? This is the bloke you went to school with, all right? This is the president of the Hawthorne Football Club. So, but, uh, you know, Kate, it's we don't mind the odd brag every now and then, do we, fellas? All right, so, Cody. No pressure there. Cody, if we can get Derm, we need you to stump up and, and get behind Denver Granger Barris because he's been injured. He's out for another six to eight. We need some love. So talkingbox.com.au, uh, get on board, uh, sponsor Denver, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll jump into our injury uh, off that if we can. Injury updates. Have you got – do you want to uh, have a quick run through of that, Jake? Yep, no worries. So um, we've got Daniel Howe with a sternum. I w- from the – from the game, the footage, I thought that was for sure an AC joint, but a sternum's not a bad result with a test. Uh, Jack Gunston with a back, one to two weeks away. We can't hey, wait. To see hey, what is a sternum, by the way? What's What part of your body is that? In Right it's, in the middle of your chest there. Yeah, that's what, how do you, how do you hurt your sternum? That's, anyway, all right, no worries. It's a different one. Yeah. We got uh, DGB, our boy. Knee six to eight weeks away, so uh, get around him, give him some love. Uh, Will Most Day, knee since Hutto. come on, DGB, better than that. He's hitting the gym, he's hitting the gym, people. Well, you need well, he needs to. Bit. Have you seen him? Ooh, look out, <laughs> well, start on him Twiggy. Well, I'm in no position to start judging other blokes' rigs, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Next one, we got Will Day with an ankle indefinite. He had surgery last week, so we're wishing all the best for Daisy with his recovery. It's a big out. Uh, it's a massive out. He was he started the season on fire. He was with him and CJ running off the halfback flank. Boy, was it exciting to watch. But um, unfortunately, we've got a bit of a wait for him to come back. Uh, we've got Seamus Mitchell with an ankle. He's also indefinite. Um, we can't wait to see him run around in Box Hill and see what he's got to offer. And obviously, James Sicily with the ACL is still indefinite as well. Big out. Big out. Definitely. Well, look, we've got a bit coming back in. Uh, our back line's going to be bloody strong. It's just, it's, yeah, mate, the whole the team's going to be backman. Yeah, that was just about to bring that up. It's, um, geez, round one, 2022 is going to be, I know it's a while away, but, geez, that back six, talk about competition for spots. Does yeah. Will Day or CJ go to a wing potentially? I mean, that's probably a conversation for another day, but mm. I, I think um it's Clarko's MO, right? He just he wants to make every player defensive. So which is great, you know, if you if that's how you lock it in your forward line is play um defensively in your forward line. But so it's it's sorry. Keeping. What wins finals? It's it's a really strong defensive team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if you want to talk about good ball users, Jack Gunston and James Sicily out would be two of the top three best kicks in the team easily. Oh, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I was Mike. devastated when they moved Sicily down the back. I loved him in the forward line. How good was he? Yeah. But he will player. he ever get back there? I don't know. I never thought someone could have more swagger than Smithy down there, but, geez, he's got a lot. <laughs> Big Sith, I love him. Yeah. He's a modern-day yeah. derm, and we love it. We're here for it. He is. Absolutely. Love it. So, so my question as we, we look towards uh, this week, so incidentally, every team that's played uh, Hawthorne the week after they've lost, so we're actually doing some damage, which is, um, you know, we want to chalk up the wins. But interesting scene, we, we just went down to the Cats and then the Ds have uh, fixed them up. We, I, I think we've probably softened them up a little bit. But um, to the Jake race, Brad, if you've got some thoughts, what do you think? And fans, Cats, sorry, Ds versus Hawks this week. Um, are we, we going to get a win, first of all? I am strangely optimistic. Uh, I don't mean strangely in the fact of no faith in the boys, but 1-3 and three v 4-0, and oh, you'd be thinking we're definitely going to be rank outsiders. But, um, you know, you can only beat who you play, but Melbourne got an injury-ravaged 3-0 in round one. GWS had... Blokes go down left, right, and centre. Um, the Saints didn't get up for um, Spud's game for whatever reason there, and we softened up the Cats for him. So is the 4-0 and a 4-0 and of a premiership team? I'm not sure. But, yeah, weirdly optimistic going into this one. I, I can smell an upset for sure. We, yeah, we've always had the wood over Melbourne. I mean, 
they uh, they obviously beat us in that final. Uh, it was that 2016? No, it's 17. And um, 18, I think. 18, yeah, the prelim. And uh, it's, uh, it, but other than that, we we seem to beat them. But it's all pretty much a new team now. So uh, I don't know. I don't know which way it's going to go. It's going to be hard to pick. They'll go in strong favourites, and they've got a little bit of uh, you know Adamuze Hawks intel potentially, um, which will be. Yeah, interesting to watch. I think, well, we've got new assistant coaches in as well. So, um, yeah, they're going in firm favourites. But, look, does weather play a different, make a difference here? How do you think we will fare if it is um, if it is a wet wet game? Yeah, huge difference. We're ranked last for contested ball, which is what rain does to the ground. Um, and Melbourne a third. Gorn, uh, sorry, not Gorn. Uh, Oliver, Petrarca, Vining, Brayshaw, Dull. They'll feed on that in the wet, and it's um it's up to our midfielders, I think, to to up the pressure. Only averaging the fifty tackles um, for the year, I think we're bottom six in that stat. So, um yeah, if it rains, I think we might get sort of a forty to fifty as in points for the for the whole game. Hopefully, we're on the uh, on the fifty side, but geez, got to attack that midfield. We were humbled last week, so we're looking yeah. for a response. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Got reason. Gunning for the uh, meteorologist title. Go on. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> He's actually got me this week with the weather. I haven't really had a look at the uh, the forecast. But, yeah, I was going to bring up the midfield because just treading back over the Fremantle game, I think that was one of the disappointing factors was how many clean centre clearances Frio got. And those clean centre clearances really resulted in their scores. So with the midfield so powerful as Melbourne's, it's, um, it's probably better than Frio's. So we've really got to up our game. Otherwise, we're going to get a really serious reality check from that superstar midfield. I've got the stat for you, boys, if that's all right. If you, oh, uh, lay it on us, mate. Lay goals. it on us. Melbourne are plus 48 uh, points for in first halves. So they're the kings of jumping out of the block so far. And the Hawks are uh, – excuse me just while I bring it up. And the, the Hawks have conceded 62% of their scores in the first halves this year. If they get out to a good start, it's just going to be yet another um, trying to play catch up, and especially if it's wet, geez, it's going to be puff. But if anyone's going to get us up and about, it's going to be Clarko. I'm feeling good. Yeah, uh, look, I'm I, I'm pretty optimistic. I don't know, I'm I'm halfway, but I'm always optimistic about the Hawks. So I I think um, especially when Clarko is the the coach, I think uh, three ga- three losses in a row is going to be too many to bear, uh, and fours. Just not not acceptable, I think. And um, it's mind you, last year it was apparently it was it was acceptable. So um, that's a whole other story, though, isn't it? Different game last year. That was you can't count last year. It didn't count. There wasn't there wasn't a premier last year either, as far as I can of it. <laughs> unless we won it, of course. Different story. Yeah, absolutely. Seventeen clubs didn't win the uh, didn't win the flag last year, and no one acknowledges the eighteen. So that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, all right, putting you. Okay, I want everyone to put in uh, their predictions. Uh, if you're watching it, put it in the in the comments. Your predictions, who you think is going to win and by how much. Uh, I'd be curious to get the viewers' thoughts on that. Tell you what, boys, boys, what are your predictions? Jake, well, after you, mate. I'll first. I'll start with two things that I really want to see, and then I'll give you a prediction. The first thing is Connor Downey to play. I'd Ooh. I'd love. To with Daniel Howe as a test, if he doesn't get up, I can see Connor Downey sliding onto a wing beautifully. And the second is I want to see Tom Phillips shadow Ed Langdon. Ed Langdon wow, is arguably the Melbourne's most influential player out on a wing. He just drives their offense. And with Tom Phillips, a little bit shaky to start, has been a little bit lost in a role. I'd love for him to just follow Ed Langdon around and try and quell his influence. But I think I think Hawthorne are going to get up by about nine points. I'm going to be at the game. I'm going to be supporting the boys, so I can't wait. Excellent. All right, race uh, after you, mate. No worries. I'm I'm backing in Punky. I think he's going to give uh, Neville Jetter if he's playing uh, a bath four plus from Punky. He's just going to be everywhere. You can't. Now, form is temporary, but class is permanent, and Punky's got it in spades. So I'm backing him in. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going. I'm going three goals. I think we remind the footy world just how good we are, and perhaps that Melbourne's form is a little bit of a smokescreen backing us in. Love it, Matty. Hawks Hawks by seven. Um, I'll I'll follow trend here. Look, I want to see. um, Look, I'm not expecting Gorn to not win the hitouts, but I want to see him kept honest, and I'd love to see Big Boy and Seeks dropping back, um, kicking a few goals and uh, just really making sure it's not to advantage what, what Gorn's doing. I'd love to see Warple given, uh, be given another um, assignment on, on somebody as well and just slowly build that momentum up, just get a few more posies himself and keep someone honest. So if they do have a good, strong midfield. So, um, yeah, you might see how you might see Warple running through there, just really putting a, a solid tag on. So, um, yeah, Hawks by seven. If you put your coach's hat on, Matt, does he go to Viney, Brayshaw, or Oliver? Uh, I think probably Brayshaw. Okay. So, mm. yep. Uh, he does. He does a, a lot of good things, Brayshaw. Look, they're all. <laughs> it's 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 a hard one, but uh, yeah, you've got to work out how many you're going to tag tight. So I would yeah. uh, I'd stick tight to him. All right, boys. I'll give you my prediction. Go on. Uh, 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 it's sad to say, but I, I actually think that Melbourne right oh, no. now are, are playing like a premiership team, uh, and I think that'll have a point to prove, and they, I think they're going to want to steamroll us, and I, I think this could be a blowout in 45 points. Oh. Oh, okay. I hate to say it, but I'm really hoping I'm wrong, uh, but that's that's what I think at the moment. I'm, I've always been optimistic and, and look for the positives, but I, I, I don't know, guys. I just I think that um, the young blokes will capitulate under that pressure that they're putting out. Okay, Ouch. Well. I don't think you've ever given a, a – you do swing. You are an emotional uh, supporter, Brad, but that's a that's devastating. Oh, we go. Yeah, we, mate, we, you can praise me you. all you want, Matt, but, yeah, no, it's uh, – We got I'm within five goals more. of Richmond and you're giving Melbourne seven and a half. Wow, we. Yeah. All right. Sorry, what guys. Yes, I know. I do. I think. I think they're better than Richmond at the moment. Oh. Yeah. You've got to oh. wash your mouth out. Whoa. Uh, sorry. I, I, they are. Melbourne's just bloody on fire at the moment. They. They. It's like they've locked. I know. I'm sorry, Joe. I know. I, I know. I know. I'm sorry, but it's just. It's how I feel at the moment. Okay. It's just how I feel. So, oh. and look, I'd, I'd love it if the Hawks turned it round. Uh, but three losses in a row might, might have got me down a bit. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a whole lot of, uh, yeah, explosion going on in the brain. Mate, well, uh, to, to you, Jake and Reese, uh, it's been good to have you on board. Love your uh, your insights and your, your stats and um, your opinions. We're going to have you uh, both helping us write a few articles on the uh, talkinghawks.com uh, website, which is awesome. Um Fans, thank you. Let's uh, let's prove Brad that he's he's wrong um, through the uh, week. Just before we go, if we can tease the TikTok, yeah. I'll get it out of the way quick. I won't. Do I don't want to preamble. Yeah, let's um, do it. We're gonna introduce something. Uh, if it won't be on the live stream, it'll be on the articles once they're up and about. So Hawks fans, jump on that. Uh, it's called the Hall of Mirrors. This is not taken seriously at all. Just something a bit funny at the end of the or the middle of the week from last week. Someone from the Hawks needs to have a good hard look at themselves. So they've got to go into the Hall of Mirrors. And there's no bigger bloke at Hawthorne than Ned Reeves. He's seven, six foot 11, according to this TikTok. He did a height comparison with Dylan Moore. And we don't mind TikTok, younger generation. I'm the only one here on it. Um, the boys have got to jump on. Got to get with the times, fellas. Goodness me. <laughs> but we've got Ned Reeves standing next to Dylan Moore. They've done a bit of a height comparison and they put in a, uh, a time warp filter and they folded his torso to look. So his legs are the same size, his head's crouched down, and his torso's folded to make him look 5'10". We're not having that, Ned, frankly. That's nuts. <laughs> I've got to get the younger people involved, but 5'10", not your go. So you've got to get in the hall, Ned. You've got to have a big, hard look at yourself. And if anyone's got any nominations for next week, absolutely. Bring well, them in, uh, whether it's on socials or on the ground or whatever. But, yeah. I'll, I'll Ned, say this, Reese. When when it's set on talking hawks, the Hawthorne world listens. So uh, no, I'm sure Ned, I'm sure Ned will take that on board. So just like Jager did, take my comments on board last week. We don't. We're happy to, to uh, demand better. 
So come on, Ned. He's got to respond. He's got to bounce back. <laughs> We will chuck little snippets like that if there's links uh, just in the YouTube uh, description. So uh, if you've got that one, uh, Reese, um, give us the entry. But uh, it's been a good night, lads. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm up and about. I, I think we're going to have a win. So uh, let's just see how we go. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And thanks for joining us, viewers. And don't forget, we've got Jeffrey, the Jeff, um, the big Jeffrey Cannon on next week. So join us for that and send us through the questions that you'd like us to ask him um, as well. So thanks for joining us and uh, go Hawks.